And welcome back to Dukascopy TV for the second of two interviews today with Mr. John Hancock. Now, it's the most hotly contested job in the financial industry at present. Who will be taking over from US Federal Reserve Chairman Mr. Ben Bernanke? John Hancock is here to discuss that. John, so if we line up the two candidates, we know their credentials, but how will Larry Summers and Janet Yellen's skills feed into the role of Federal Reserve Chairperson? Well, if you speak, it from a pure, speak about it from a purely policy sense, I don't think there's a huge gulf separating these two individuals. I mean, loads of speculation in the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times about Larry Summers being more focused on the fiscal side and on, uh, on uh, stimulus, Yellen more focused on uh, mon monetary policy and, and concerns about uh, 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 too loose monetary policy. But in reality, these, these two figures are, 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 are singing from the same hymn book in, in many ways. Um, I think the big difference is personality, uh, if you can be a socio-psychologist about this. I mean, Larry Summers is a kind of a rock star uh, economist uh, political figure. He's, he's a celebrity in his own right. He is highly confrontational, uh, highly controversial. He makes ways, he, does, he makes it clear that he doesn't suffer fools gladly. He is uh, a, a giant of a figure. John Yellen, until this race began, was a relatively uh, unknown figure, a more subdued figure, a more reflective figure below the radar screen and seemed content to be there. Um, the question then is what kind of personality do we need for this phase of, of uh, U.S. and of course global economic policy? And I, I'd suggest that maybe we don't need the, the rock stars right now. We don't need the sort of ripple effect. We don't need the uncertainty and the sense of crisis. I think what we need is a bit like we had with uh, Ben Bernanke up to now, is a steady hand on the tiller. If we look at the negatives then of these candidates, what would you say to comments that the speculations you've mentioned already that Larry Summers could end up being given the role and the fact that that's already having a negative impact on the Federal Reserve's efforts to try and stabilize the economy? What does that say really about him? The, the reputation that precedes Larry Summers is a, you know, a brilliant uh, but controversial economist, uh, economist, and certainly someone who has a relatively checkered past. I mean, uh, a large segment of public opinion in the United States blames Larry Summers, and indeed the whole cohort that surrounded Larry Summers, the, 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 that goes back to the first and second Clinton administrations, the Rubin crowd, the, and which includes uh, Rubin himself, Summers, uh, uh, Tim Geithner, we know the, the cast of characters, and many people in the United States blame this group for the financial deregulation, the, the sort of cowboy capitalism in the financial sector that precipitated the 2008 crisis. So I don't think Larry Summers, if you took a vote on this, if there was a referendum in the United States and asked your average American, would you favor Larry Summers as Federal Reserve uh, Chairman, I think he'd lose. Um, what's propelling him forward, we don't know the details behind the scenes, but there seems to be um, uh, uh, a tendency, uh, 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 a bias in President Obama to pick a secure, solid, um, uh, available team. I mean, he's, he's played quite um, um, uh, creatively with his foreign policy team, with uh, other aspects of his domestic policy, but his economic team is essentially uh, a retread of the, of, the, of the Clinton team that surfaced in the uh, in the uh, in the 1990s, uh, and in many ways, uh, you know, on that level, uh, Hillary lost the, the the nomination, but her economic team won, and uh, Larry Summers is one of the key figures in that team. If we look at current chairperson, Mr. Ben Bernanke, Big Ben, um, he seems to have done a lot since he took over the role in 2006 to really almost win over the US public. He seems to have won a lot of brownie points, as it were, of late, kind of almost becoming the face of the US economy. Most recently, he congratulated the parents of Princeton graduates when he spoke at the baccalaureate ceremony. How important is it for his successor to be socially intelligent, do you think? That's a very interesting question, Natalie. I mean, we live in weird times uh, from the point of view of, uh, of, of this debate. I mean, in so many aspects of public policy and indeed in, 
in, in uh, the way we view the world, our authority figures are in disrepute. I mean, you know, the political class is universally reviled. You know, we elect clowns in Italy and uh, quasi-fascist parties in Greece and, and UK independence parties. You know, politicians, when, when they're polled, you know, fall lowest on the level of, of, of public support. We hate our presidents, we hate our prime ministers, we hate our congressmen and, and MPs. And yet, for all that disillusionment and disenchantment with authority figures, we seem to have weirdly uh, glommed on to central bankers as our new um, uh, gods, our new rock stars, the, the saviors who are going to manage this crisis and bring us out uh, secure and and back on track at the end and, and you don't have to go too far to see the rock star figures I mean uh, I guess it started with Greenspan but we have Mark Carney's arrival in uh, in uh, the UK is only second in importance to the arrival of uh, Prince George uh, we have rock star uh, Larry Summers uh, attempting to, to run the, res the Federal Reserve and I'm not convinced I mean central bank policy is vitally important but do these men and potentially uh, women have it in their power to steer our massively complex and ever-changing global economy? I don't think so. I think we overestimate their powers. Maybe it would be good to have a, a Federal Reserve Chair person who was um, a little below the radar screen, who didn't try to sell himself or herself as a rock star, who was more realistic with what could be achieved, and also, and I think most importantly, took this air of suspense and drama and uncertainty out of the equation. I mean, it's actually very counterproductive that we're even having this debate. Presumably what the U.S. economy needs right now, the global economy needs, is certainty. You know, pa handing on the, the mantle uh, effortlessly and seamlessly with a minimum of drama. Instead, it's become a debate as, 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 uh, as, as prevalent and as, and as hyped up as whether Kim Kardashian's going to have a boy or a girl. And I think that's not constructive for uh, global economic stability. I think that's possibly the first time we've had a uh, Kardashian reference in the studio. And lastly, John, we, we have to ask, which would be your pick of the candidates for this job? Well, that's a tough question. I would go personally. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm impressed. And, uh, and, and intrigued by Janet Yellen. Uh, I don't think she'll get the job, to be perfectly honest, but she'd be my pick. She seems to me to be the uh, Angela Merkel of central bankers. Uh, she's calm, she is poised, she seems to be reflective, not quick to make judgment. She seems steady in a, in a crisis. And most importantly, she's not a testosterone-charged superstar. Well, we will continue to wait for President Obama to make that much-awaited announcement. John, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your views today. Good to be here. That's all we've got time for right this second, but don't go away. We've still got plenty more exclusive interviews coming up for you. Goodbye for now.